What's going on everyone? Austin John plays here and today we're going to be taking a look at some subsequent information for Pokemon Legends Arceus before we do our analysis video. <laughs> We always do one of these and we take a deep dive at the website and there is a lot for Legends Arceus. So that's the reason that this is a separate video from the BDSP one. And then tomorrow we are going to be having our analysis videos once I have a lot of time to go over all this in extreme detail. Okay, what you've probably actually been waiting for, Legends Arceus. Let's go into the deep dive here. It's an all new action RPG, Sinnoh Adventure. And from what we've seen in the trailer, it really is its own action RPG game. They are really, really breaking the format. It, it, it seems kind of even more like, like a Final Fantasy game, especially with the strong attack or weak attack. What's it called? The strong style, agile style. And then you get the order of attacks. And I do think that was in Final Fantasy 10. Yeah, I think it was in 10. They were able to do that and then showed up on the right side of the screen. So, th you know, there's now even more complexity to these battles. First of all, pre-order bonuses, retail version, pre-order bonus, get an in-game outfit with early purchase. Uh, it's the kimono set. Learn more. Well, you can have a kimono set with apparently bandages on your chest. That's kind of neat. Those who pre-order receive it by getting mystery gift until May 9th. How do you know if it's pre-order or just early, early purchase bonus? Know what I mean? It takes approximately two hours of playtime before mystery gift feature is unlocked. You need an internet, con internet connection. You do not need NSO. Okay. Wait a second. It's called Hisuian Growlithe Komodo set. Pre-ordering right now. Pre-order right now. I need that. Need that in my life. Need that in my life. <sighs> Look at the boots! The boots with the fur! Oh, the boy doesn't get the boots. And just little loafers but I want the boots with the fur. Come on, come on. I did see, uh, I think it was Poke Jungle. Other pre-order bonuses for different stores. One, there's a tumbler and a glass and what looks like a mouse pad and that. Number two includes keychains, a notebook, a box of things, whatever that is. Number three, a lanyard, a photo frame. What is that? Is that a pop socket? And something else. And then a piece of paper, a bowl. I want that ramen bowl. I want that ramen bowl, that's for sure. Mm, a pamphlet and a notepad with cover. And then there's more pre-order bonuses. Uh, I don't think he's included exactly where we can pre-order these things, but I am going to keep an eye on this and I am going to let you know because, bro, that, I want that ramen bowl. I need, listen, I want that ramen bowl and I want the tumbler, okay? And then I'm going to have a full Legends Arceus dinnerware set. Then I need four. The Pokemans. This is this is the big one. This is the one that melted my heart a little bit. First partner Pokemon, you get your choice of Rowlet, which is from Sun and Moon, Cyndaquil, which is from Gold and Silver, and Oshawa, which is from the other one. Any new information about these guys? First from the Alola region. Nope, pretty much no. No. The other one being the Unova region. Got it. Legendary Pokemon, there's Arceus. I don't think there's any information on it. Holding the key to this tale is the Pokemon known as Arceus is said to have shaped all there is in the world. Just how is this mighty Pokemon connected to your journey? Wow, thanks for revealing so much. Okay, okay. Werder, which is what I'm gonna be calling him, Werder. Basque Legion, and the new regional forms, Hisuian Bre uh, Breviary, and be still my beating heart, Hisuian Growlithe. Werder. <laughs> Werder is a Pokemon that, that's close with people and helps make their lives possible. In the Hisuya region, Stantler can evolve into Werder. 
This Pokemon has been treasured since long ago by the people of the region, for whom it is indispensable. It grows much larger when it evolves, and garments with the fur shed from its beard, tail, and legs that are highly prized for their top-notch protection against the cold. It emits psychic energy from the orbs on its antlers. Using the black orbs at the bases of its antlers, this Pokemon generates and unleashes psychic energy powerful enough to distort space. Wurder searches out safe paths by using his antlers like antennae, running at the head of its herd and leading young Stantler. Okay, so now Stantler has an evolution. Did Stantler have an evolution before? Do I remember that right? St Stantler. Pretty sure it was a single form Pokemon. Yes, single form Pokemon. Baskew Legion, who I personally think Basculin is one of the most useless Pokemon, and there's two different forms, and why? Basque Legion, the big fish Pokemon, Water Ghost. Okay, so we're gonna have ourselves an alternative to Jellicent over here. Nine feet, 10 inches, 242 pounds. That's a beefy fish. Battling together with the mournful souls of its comrades. Basculin in the Hisuya region can evolve into this Pokemon. This evolution occurs when a Basculin is possessed by the souls of other Basculin from its school that cannot withstand the harsh journey upstream. Bascu Legion fights together with these souls, which attacks opponents as if with as if with a will of their own. Tremendous unflagging physical ability, so it's a physical attacker. So it's a water ghost physical attacker. The moment this Pokemon senses animosity, it will become enraged and attack relentlessly until the enemy is defeated. This Pokemon gains power from the souls possessing it, letting it swim on and on without tiring. Got it. Are there two different forms? Right, there's two different Basculins? Am I thinking of the other fish? No, I'm thinking of this, the red striped and the blue striped. So maybe there's also a blue striped version. We don't know yet. Hisuian Breviary which is a regional difference. Instead of being America, it is now black and white with scary face. The Battle Cry Pokemon Psychic Flying 5'7", 95 pounds. I knew a girl who was 5'7", 95 pounds. A solitary bird Pokemon that flies in from the north in winter. When Rufflet in the Hisuya region evolve, they become Hisuian Breviary. In the winter, this Pokemon flies in from somewhere farther north. It's larger than the previously discovered form of Braviary and tends to live alone rather than in flocks. Shockwaves of psychic power. Hisuian Braviary can imbute its eerie screeches with psychic power to generate powerful shockwaves. It then uses its sharp talons to tear at and seize prey weakened by those shockwaves. Apparently, it can also use its psychic power to sharpen its sixth, its sixth, its sixth sense and enter a trance that boosts its physical abilities. Okay. And the most important one, Fluffy Boy. Hisuian Growlithe is the scout Pokemon Fire Rock type, 27, 50 pounds. Adorable. Soft Fur Stony Horn. This is Growlithe as it appears in the Hisuia region. Its Hisuian form has longer, more voluminous, vol voluminous, I don't know how to say that word fur than previously discovered form of Growlithe. This soft, heat-retaining fur helps the Pokemon thrive even in the frigid Hisuya region. The sharp horn on its head is made of rock, but breaks easily, so Hisuian Growlithe uses it only when it'll have the greatest effect. A weary Pokemon that guards its territory with a partner. Hisuian Growlithe are highly vigilant and tend to be seen watching over their territory in pairs. Apparently, they have lived apart from humans for a long time and are unused to being around people. Building trust with a Hisuian Growlithe takes time. There's something very important I want to point out here between these Pokemans, specifically these ones. Wurder is an evolution of a Pokemon that did not have an evolution. Basque Legion is an evolution of a Pokemon that did not have an evolution. Hisuian Braviary is a regional evolution. We do not know about its first form, the Rufflet, if it's going to be Hisuian Rufflet. I don't think it would be. But Hisuian Growlithe is the first form, which means we are going to have Hisuian Arcanine or a, a, a split evolution. What's it going to be? What's it going to look like? How furry is it going to be? I'm very excited for all these questions to be answered and more. Gameplay. We saw a lot about gameplay. I don't know what else they're going to be covering in here that we haven't seen already. Uh, there may be certain Pokemon behaviors or entire species that you witness only under the right conditions, such as during a particular time of day or in certain kinds of weather. 
So you mean like Pokemon Snap, you're gonna be finding nocturnal Pokemon sleeping during the day, stuff like that. And we're used to the dynamic weather system. Battle can be a critical step in catching some Pokemon. Wild Pokemon become easier to catch after they've been weakened in a battle. I wonder if there's going to be a way to know which Pokemon you could just throw a ball at and catch, or if you're going to have to battle it, or if you approach a Pokemon, sneak up on it, throw a ball, it breaks out of the ball, you then have to fight it, or you can then choose to flee or fight, know what I mean? Also, now that you can catch Pokemon, and if you take too much damage, you black out. So my question is, can you exist in the overworld with a party of all fainted Pokemon? Or would that cause you to black out? Know what I mean? How to start a battle. If you throw a Pokeball containing one of your Pokemon at a wild Pokemon, a battle will begin. You'll enter the battle seamlessly rather than switching to a battle specific screen as in previous Pokemon games, yes. The flow of battle in Pokemon Legends Arceus works differently than in prior games. In past games, battles have proceeded one turn at a time, blah blah blah. In Legends Arceus, Pokemon stats and other factors determine how many actions each Pokemon get to take and in what order. You could create situations where one Pokemon might get to take multiple turns in a row. You could heal your Pokemon immediately after dishing out attacks, or throw yourself all in with a no holds barred flurry of attacks. I mean, now we see moves like agility having so much like single play value instead of it just being, you know, like a like a specific battle or, or competitive. Agile style and strong style. Pokemon can remember four moves at a time, yes. In this game, your moves can also be unleashed in two new ways, agile and strong which okay so we see these little icons here right and we see the little dot on the right see the dot next to aura sphere crunch and close combat we do not see the little dot next to calm mind i don't know what this scroll is know what i mean but i wonder if you can choose the strong style for status moves like calm mind so imagine the agile style boosts your stats by one stage or the strong style boosts it by two stages but gives you like a big delay. Know what I mean? That'd be neat, but I think that dot denotes if you have the ability to do agile style. But when the agile style pops up, you, the scroll has the, the up arrow. So maybe the scroll is the icon for which style you're choosing. I don't know. Using a move in the strong style raises the Pokemon's power, but your Pokemon action speed will be lowered. Okay. How to complete the Pokedex. Okay. Completing the Pokedex seems much different than it used to. You can add information to your decks by catching, but catching a Pokemon once won't be enough to complete this Pokedex entry. You'll need to keep studying that Pokemon and complete research tasks to increase your research progress on it and flesh out its entry. Completing these research tasks will also contribute to your work with the Galaxy Expedition Team and raise your rank as a team member, granting you access to new areas. Okay, so as we see here, for the Shinx, you have to catch one, and then two, four, 10, and 15. You also have to defeat that many. You have to defeat it with ground moves, because it's super effective. Times you've seen it use quick attack, times you've seen it use bite. Number of its forms you've registered. What? Now is this talking about male and female? Is this talking about regular and shiny? Or is this talking about a different visual difference of Shinx. Well, let's not talk about evolution because there's three forms. See, number you've evolved, one, two, three. Number of forms you've registered, two. It might be gender difference, but it's saying the word forms. So is this a hint that there's going to be a different form of Shinx in this game? Number of forms you've registered. Now it says two, and we see a Luxio in the party. A number you've evolved, one. I don't know. That's some cryptic stuff right there. Most illuminating, uh, most illuminating, I'll update our Pokedex with this new data. So it seems like being out in the field isn't going to actually mark it as complete. You still need to check in with uh, one of the peoples. Base camps. Whenever you leave Jubilee Village and set out on an excursion, your first stop will be one of the base camps that serve as a handy outpost for your work. You can stop by for a rest during an excursion, letting your team of Pokemon recover their health, or use a camp's workbench to craft some items. Yay, crafting system! Oh, you craft the Pokeballs yourself! That's neat. So adorable. Oh look, Pikachu confirmed.
You may be unable to go on your survey if you take too much damage, whether it's caused by wild attacks or falling from high places. Fall damage confirmed. If you get into danger, don't be reckless. Use your base camps to full effect as you wary on survey work. Crafting. Making items through crafting. As you're exploring, you'll collect all kinds of materials that you can use for crafting, combining items to make new ones. For example, you'll combine an apricorn and a type of stone called a tumble stone and you can make a pokeball. You can craft items using the workbenches found in base camps or in the village. It also looks like, see these two icons here? This leads me to believe that you're going to have, you know, your local inventory and maybe a storage inventory. Hmm. Maybe you're limited on the amount of things that you could actually carry with you. Because also if we look over here, we have 33 balls in our inventory and zero in maybe storage icon. Pokeballs of old were apparently built a little differently from the ones we know so well because, you know, self-code didn't exist. They were made mostly of wood and steam puffed from the tops when Pokemon were caught. Smoke bombs obviously let you get away. Cloud of smoke that reduces visibility in the area which will keep wild Pokemon from noticing you. Oh, okay. There'll be great aid in stealthily approaching Pokemon in areas where no rocks or other obstacles to hide behind. Made of suit foot root. I know it's soot foot root, but soot foot root just sounds so much more fun to say. And a caster fern. Now, is these going to be things that appear in the overworld, kind of like Breath of the Wild, or are these going to be little glistening spots like they were in the wild area? Heavy balls. Special variety Pokeballs more effective on catching Pokemon that haven't noticed you. It no longer has to do with the Pokemon's weight. They're heavier than regular balls, so they don't fly very far. You want to make sure you sneak up to a close close to a Pokemon before using one of these. Oh, okay. So that sounds like a way that we could catch, you know, more difficult to catch Pokemon, but, you know, limited range. So there's a trade-off there. That's neat. And the last article that we're looking at today is the story. The Natural Majesty of the Haisui Region. The adventure is set in the expansive natural majesty of the Haisuya region. In an age long ago, when it was rare for people and Pokemon to live in a close harmony, in this time, this land of Haisui will come to be called Sinnoh, a region you may know well. Mount Coronet rises from the center of the region, surrounded on all sides by areas with distinct environments. Each area is rich with its own natural features and plays host to different Pokemon ecosystems. Oh, look at that map! That's a pretty majestic looking map. I love the bay with the little Psyduck over there. Can I have this image? I want this image. Uh, where's the town? Oh, there's the town at the at the, the bottom left over here. Okay. Got some big old rock structure over there. It looks like there's some fishermen over there. A tentacool. And a Gyarados. Gyarados confirmed. I'm happy. Even if there's no Charizard. Your base of operations in Jubilife City. Jubilee Village. Sorry, there's no cities yet. Uh, the center of operations for the Galaxy Expedition Team, or Galaxy Team for short. People who have come from various regions to study Haisui. The team includes various cores, such as the Med Corps, the Service Security Corps, and the Survey Corps, which carry out research on how Pokemon live. After receiving an assignment or a request and preparing for your next excursion, you'll set out from the village to study one of the various areas of the region. After you finish your survey work, you'll return once more to prepare for your next task. Okay, so it seems like completing the Pokedex will allow you to unlock different areas on the map. And that's sort of like a side story or side missions. And these are your main missions, like your actual storyline. Uh, your own lodgings boasts a range of useful institutions and services, such as a trading post where you can trade with other players. Okay, uh, NSO is required to enjoy certain features of a little Abra. And there's the Togepi? And there, could, we, could we buy eggs? Is this the nursery? The main character is Akari or Rei. As a protagonist of Legends Arceus, you'll join the Galaxy team as a member of the Survey Corps. Your goal will be, will be to meet every species of Pokemon from every corner of the region as you work to complete its land's first ever Pokedex. Your appearance you choose at the beginning in the game will determine whether the uh, Akari or Rei appears as your fellow team member. Got it. Or your rival. <laughs> this dude. Professor Laventon. As a member of the Galaxy Team Survey Corps, he conducts research into Pokemon's modes of life. He aims to complete a Pokedex. Commander Kamado. 
The boss of the Galaxy team can be a harsh leader at times, but the team members trust him deeply and know him to be reliable. Captain Celine, Celine. Captain Celine is the leader of the Survey Corps. She is strict both with orders and with herself, but she sees your potential, allows you to take trial to join the Galaxy team. That's a woman. That's a woman. Reminds me of the angry teacher from Glee. Ties to the world of Pokemon Diamond and Pearl. While Pokemon Legends Arceus is set in a different age from Diamond and Pearl, it seems that there are some connections found between them. Jubilife Village is the main base of your adventure in Legends Arceus, and in Diamond and Pearl, this village is Jubilife City, a bustling metropolis that you visit early in your adventure. Commander Kamado and Professor Rowan. Kamado, who appears in Arceus, is an ancestor of Rowan, who appears in Diamond and Pearl. As it seems that there are other people in this game who might also be ancestors to familiar faces you may know. Oh, what? Are we gonna see ancestor of Professor Oak? Or, or, or some, oh, wow. Wow, guys, look at this gold duck Komodo. I need that on a bathrobe now. Now, I need, or just on a shirt. I'll take it on a shirt. I'm cool with the shirt, but look at that. Also, that gold duck look, looks a little bit different. Just saying, looks much more amphibious. Maybe regional gold duck is coming. Maybe. And that is that for Legends Arceus. Well, there you go, guys. That's all the information that we learned from the website. We're gonna have the analysis video out for you tomorrow, so you can check that out. And uh, yeah, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, turn on notifications. Until next time, Austin John out.